Hey everybody, this thing I'm going to show you a good example of what's called capacitor plague. Capacitor plague occurred from as early as the late 90s up till, I'd say about 2007, 2008. There's even still some capacitors out there right now that are affected by this problem. A lot of capacitor manufacturers were trying to cut costs and they more or less cheated on a certain electrolytic compound that goes inside these canned capacitors and a lot of Chinese companies copied the formula so there was a lot of brands out there that had faulty capacitors the problem with the formula was that it was missing an agent that prevented decomposition of the electrolytic stuff in the capacitors more or less it's like a paper and a wax take a look here here are some capacitors they have vented tops and they're oozing out electrolyte and what happens is when this stuff comes out the capacitor loses its capacitance rating sometimes this can cause stability issues with the motherboard this also has occurred in a lot of computer power supplies and consu other consumer electronics this motherboard still works it's still post but I believe there are stability problems as I got this in a part system from the computer work store for $14.99. I have some perfectly good capacitor pulls from a different motherboard. Then I'm going to resolder on to this motherboard and place those capacitors. I have now soldered a new capacitor to the motherboard and here's how they look on the board. Now the motherboard is installed back into the case. I have to say things are working really good. I have a fresh install of Windows XP. Never had any stability problems whatsoever. I also went ahead and put a bigger Norbridge cooler on this motherboard as well because the original was a bit smaller and it had the junky pink stuff that was supposed to transfer heat, but I don't think it ever worked really good. So I took it off, cleaned everything up really good, and put this bigger heatsink on. And I also took off the CPU heatsink and got that all cleaned up with some fresh thermal compound. And here's a view of the capacitors. Replaced nine total. All of the ones that were on the CPU voltage regular module. From the top of the board all the way down to here, all nine of them, replace them. This particular motherboard is the FIC AM37. This is a board that's commonly found in HPs, compacts, e machines. Though the e machines, I think, has a better revision because the e machines boards have Sanyo capacitors, which are much higher quality than the original Ninchicon capacitors that came on this board. I now have OST capacitors installed that were pulled from a different board. Here's a close look at one of, at one of these capacitors. It is the OST 6.3 volt 3300 microfarad capacitor. Same rating as the original capacitors that was on the board. And here are the old capacitors from the board. Six out of nine had swelled up heads on them, indicating signs of failure. Now I've actually scraped off the top of these caps the electrolyte that was on top, and some electrolyte is still continuing to seep out of the tops. See, here's all the bad caps right here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. And here are the other three, which are still good. At least they look good anyway. I'm not sure if I'll keep them or not. And here is my collection of capacitors pulled from motherboards. I mean, you can get you can get electrolytic capacitors for really cheap, brand new, but I decided to keep them so I don't, you know, waste them with the dead motherboard that they come off of. All sorts of various grades of ele electrolytic capacitors in here. These are always good to have. 
Here is the capacitor that the E-Machines model of the AM37 motherboard has. It is a Sanyo capacitor at the same exact rating. I prefer Sanyo's a lot. Really good capacitors in my opinion. Never had any failures from any of them. But for any computer technician, it's always good to have a good collection of these things. Because about any computer repair person will have to do this repair sooner or later because it's a common problem with a lot of computers that were manufactured in the previous decade. Let alone the rest of the consumer electronics out there that have had this problem. By the way, this computer is a Compact Presario 6000. I was wondering if people have had this problem with this particular computer to where the motherboard capacitors would fail. Anyways, if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know. Now is an example of capacitor plague and how to fix it.